Welcome to the Trump Breaking News Network, your daily source for up to the minute Trump news. Join us today and every day. Here's today's news. This is TBNN. Trump's conflicts are unprecedented, but not unique, a short history of Republican corruption. President Trump's conflicts of interest are so vast and ubiquitous, and transparent, that it has almost become a platitude just to mention them at this point. Everyone with common sense knows that Trump's separation from his multi-billion dollar business, currently being run by his children, who are in regular contact with their father, is a charade. Yet only Democrats, and a tiny handful of principled Republicans, seem to care in Washington. Trump's dissociation from his business is analogous to the farce of modern campaign finance law, in which political campaigns are technically prohibited from coordinating with corporate-funded super PACs, yet do it with impunity because Republican commissioners on the FAC refuse to enforce the law. In a speech at the Brookings Institution last month, Walter M. Schaub Jr., director of the Office of Government Ethics, asserted that Trump stepping back from running his business is meaningless from a conflict of interest perspective, and that limiting direct communication about the business is wholly inadequate, there's not supposed to be any information at all. According to a recent New York Times report, however, it turns out that Trump isn't limiting direct communication as much as he had suggested. The president will receive reports on any profit, or loss, on his company as a whole write Times reporters Suzanne Craig and Eric Lipton, and can revoke the authority of his eldest son and his CFO, Alan H. Silberg, at any time. In addition, the purpose of the Donald J. Trump Revocable Trust is to hold assets for the exclusive benefit of the president. So Trump's separation from his business empire is even more of a farce than previously thought. It would be naive to expect Republican politicians to change their tune in the near future. The GOP's attitude towards corruption was made clear last month when Schaub's uncontroversial remarks cited above, which only stated the obvious, prompted Rep. Jason Chaffetz, Republican Utah, who chairs the House Oversight Committee, and who never flinched at investigating the exaggerated misdeeds of Hillary Clinton, to threaten an investigation of Schaub himself, rather than the president. It should be obvious by now that opposing corruption has become a partisan issue in Washington and that the vast majority of Republicans simply do not care about people in power breaking the law, unless, of course, such people happen to be Democrats. Some liberals and independents have been shocked at how shamelessly Republicans appear to disregard the endless conflicts of interest and open corruption of the new president. They shouldn't be. Republicans have long been tolerant of powerful elites breaking the law, in government and the private sector just as they have long been receptive to alternative facts. A politician who lies as blatantly and frequently as Trump does could only succeed in a party where falsehoods have become the rule, just as a politician as openly corrupt and hostile to the rule of law as Trump is could only succeed in a party that has become completely tolerant of corruption and unethical behavior by those in power. With all this in mind, it is hardly surprising that the most corrupt and unscrupulous presidential administrations in modern history have all been Republican. Whenever political corruption is mentioned, of course, most Americans think of Richard I am not a crook Nixon, likely the most corrupt and unprincipled man to ever sit in the Oval Office, although the competition is fierce. What most Americans don't know is that Ronald Reagan's administration was just as corrupt, if not more so, than Nixon's. As Haynes Johnson reported in his 1991 book, Sleepwalking Through History, America in the Reagan Years. By the end of his term, 138 Reagan administration officials had been convicted, had been indicted, or had been the subject of official investigations for official misconduct and or criminal violations. In terms of numbers of officials involved, the record of his administration was the worst ever. Reagan's customary response to instances of wrongdoing by aides was to criticize those who brought the charges, or to blame the media that reported them. That serves as a useful reminder that Republicans have been scapegoating the media for decades, which has now culminated in Trump's war against press freedom and objective truth. That's the news. Join us here every day. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell. See you next time. This is TBNN.